The study of plant viruses is done in the discipline of virology. Grapevine viruses are one type of casual agent that results in grape diseases. Before planning to establish a vineyard, whether small or large acreage, it is important to develop an action plan. Similar to building a home, several financial and logistical steps need to be taken well before establishing a new vineyard. These include retention of financial resources to establish and maintain a vineyard during formative years, identifying a piece of land suitable for establishing a vineyard, establishing trellising and irrigation systems, and developing a long-term contract with a winery to sell grapes every season. In addition to the above, the long-term sustainability of a vineyard depends heavily on planting a new vineyard with high-quality, healthy grapevines obtained from reliable and trustworthy sources. As discussed in this presentation, the quality of the grapevines heavily influences the long-term productivity and profitability of a vineyard. Before proceeding further, let's remember some facts about grapevines. First, grapevines are perennial, meaning that they can live for many years. Once planted, it takes four to five years for grapevines to reach full production, at which point they can remain highly productive for decades with proper canopy and pest and disease management. Second, unlike many other crops, grapevines are vegetatively propagated. Vegetative cuttings, instead of seed, are used for propagating grapevines. This is mainly due to the fact that vegetative cuttings obtained from a mother plant are genetically identical and they inherit the same characteristics of their mother plant. Thus, planting vegetative cuttings helps to preserve desirable characteristics or trueness to type of a cultivar or clone in the new vineyard. In general, cultivars of Vetus vinifera are used for producing wine grapes. Vineyards are planted directly with cuttings of a particular cultivar or specific clone of a cultivar or with grafted vines consisting of a scion from a particular cultivar or specific clone of a cultivar grafted onto a suitable rootstock genotype. A significant majority of vineyards in Washington State are planted directly with cuttings rather than grafted vines. Referring back to the analogy of building a house, a house with a strong roof will likely last for decades, and the long-term success of a vineyard depends on the use of healthy grapevines. It is well recognized that many diseases caused by viruses are spread via planting infected grapevines. Once a virus disease is introduced into a vineyard, it can either destroy or negatively affect grape production. The negative impacts of viruses are many, including a reduction in the lifespan of the vineyard, yield reduction, delayed ripening of grapes, and poor quality of grapes with less sugar and more acid. Poor quality grapes cannot make premium wine, which can result in lower bottle prices and economic losses for a winery. Thus, impacts of virus diseases are cumulative and costly. Therefore, planting a new vineyard with virus-free grapevines is the first critical step in successful establishment and long-term maintenance of a vineyard. Viruses are obligate parasites and live within cells of grapevines and remain active as long as plants are alive. Therefore, viruses can be introduced into a new vineyard if cuttings from virus-infected grapevines are used for plantings or grafted to rootstock. The virus continues to multiply within the newly planted grapevine, affecting its health and production. In addition, if a suitable insect or nematode vector is present in the vineyard, the virus can spread from infected to healthy plants. Eventually, it can spread throughout a vineyard block, leading to diminished vine health and reduced fruit yield and quality. Unfortunately, virus diseases are not easy to control, 
and there are no chemical treatments to eradicate the virus. The impact of virus diseases is cumulative and long-lasting in perennial crops compared to annual crops. If an annual crop, such as tomato, is devastated by a virus disease, Crop losses are for a single year and with proper precautions, new plants will perform well the following season. This is not possible with perennial crops that need four to five years for full production. By the time we realize that the young planting is not yielding a full crop due to virus infection, four to five years have been lost. Replacing the vineyard with certified pathogen-free grapevines adds another four to five years until full production. In this scenario, we are losing a total of about 10 years with no economic returns and have to absorb the cost of vineyard establishment twice. Establishing a vineyard is a long-term investment and needs sound planning that includes buying certified grapevines. On a worldwide basis, the grapevine appears to be infected with more viruses than any other perennial woody species. At present, there are more than 60 viruses capable of infecting grapevines. Many of these viruses are spread by aerial transmission through insect vectors or by soil inhabiting nematodes. With no exception, all viruses are transmissible through vegetative cuttings grafting. Therefore, Cuttings for grafts or new plants have the highest risk of spreading viruses. As mentioned earlier, this is because all grapevines are propagated through vegetative cuttings. Therefore, increased awareness about viruses and how they affect vineyard health, yield, and fruit quality will help our efforts to maintain healthy vineyards in Washington State. Fortunately, not all of these 60 plus viruses are economically important. Only a few of them are of great economic significance due to their worldwide distribution. Those viruses are classified as major virus diseases. The second group of viruses is of limited significance since they have been documented in only a few geographic regions and cause minor disease problems in wine grapes. The three most important virus diseases affecting grapevines are grapevine leaf roll disease, Rugo's wood complex, and grapevine fan leaf degeneration. These diseases are present in almost all grapevine growing regions in the world and cause significant losses to grape production. Grapevine leaf roll disease is considered one of the more widespread diseases of wine grapes. Indeed, it is one of the most complex diseases known to impact plants. It has been suggested that grapevine leaf roll disease accounts for most of the grape losses worldwide that are due to grapevine viruses. It also reduces fruit quality. Thus, grapevine leaf roll disease is recognized in the USA as a major problem for wine grape production. Rugo's wood complex affects the woody trunk of the grapevine. It is associated with vines that are grafted on rootstocks as the viruses only cause symptoms on certain grape species, most of which are commonly used as rootstocks. The Rugo's wood complex occurs as four distinct disorders depending on the type of symptoms produced on a specific indicator plant or rootstock type. These four disorders are called Rupestra stem pitting, Cober stem grooving, LN33 stem grooving, and Corky bark. Distinct symptoms on the woody trunk of grafted vines help to distinguish the four syndromes of the rugos wood complex. The rugos wood complex disorders are latent in own rooted Vetus vinifera cultivars. The disorder will ultimately kill the vine. Fan leaf disease is distributed worldwide and is the oldest known virus diseases of Vetus vinifera. It is a virus disease spread by nematodes. Therefore, the disease appears in patches in the field. All Vetus species and cultivars are susceptible to fan leaf disease. Generally, the infected vines appear stunted and less vigorous 
than normal and may have varying severities of leaf and cane malformation. Leaves of an affected vine show a range of symptoms, including vein banding, yellowing, and yellow mosaic symptoms. Fruit quality and yield can be reduced. In grapes, many viruses can be associated with one disease. In the case of grapevine leaf roll disease, several viruses called grapevine leaf roll associated viruses have been documented in grapevine showing leaf roll disease symptoms. They have been numbered serially as GLRAV1, 2, 3, and so on. On a worldwide basis, grapevine leaf roll associate virus 3 seems to be the most prevalent as well as the most economically destructive among the currently known leaf roll associated viruses. Similarly, at least six different viruses listed here have been found associated with different disorders of the rugose wood disease complex. In contrast, only one virus called grapevine fan leaf virus is known to cause fan leaf disease. In a single plant, these viruses can occur alone or in different combinations as mixed infections. Grapevine red blotch disease was recently discovered and has the potential of becoming an economically significant virus disease in American vineyards. Symptoms of red blotch in some red grape varieties consist of red veins and irregular reddish purple blotches on leaves. These symptoms overlap with those of grapevine leaf roll disease. A DNA virus called grapevine red blotch associated virus is the cause of red blotch disease. Unlike other grapevine viruses mentioned earlier, the red blotch associated virus appears to have geminate or twin particles of identical size and shape. Based on the information provided in previous slides, it is clear that each virus disease is distinct morphologically and presents different characteristic symptoms in the grapevine. However, symptoms of a disease are variable depending on the cultivar. For example, red and white fruited grape cultivars show distinct differences in symptoms caused by each of the previously mentioned viral diseases. Grapevine leaf roll disease shows contrasting symptoms in red and white fruited cultivars. In the case of red fruited cultivars, such as Merlot, mature leaves at the bottom portions of canes show symptoms consisting of green veins and reddish or reddish purple intervenal areas. In contrast, the white fruited cultivars like Chardonnay show mild chlorosis or yellowing due to infection with leaf roll disease. In advanced stages of the disease, especially towards the end of the season, infected leaves in both red and white fruited cultivars show downward rolling of leaf margins. This symptom is the namesake of the disease. These symptoms tend to be more pronounced during cooler seasons. Besides differences in symptoms between red and white fruited cultivars, symptoms vary in a single cultivar and of course among cultivars. As an example, these pictures show distinct symptoms of leaf roll disease in a red fruited cultivar like Cabernet Sauvignon. The leaf at the center shows typical leaf roll disease symptoms of Cabernet Sauvignon consisting of green veins and intervenal reddening. Other leaves show a broad range of symptoms. Some look like leaf roll symptoms and others show atypical symptoms of leaf roll disease even though it is the same Cabernet Sauvignon cultivar. Symptoms on fruit can vary from only a mild loss in yield to extreme reductions in yield coupled with poor fruit ripening and color development. Because of the variation in visual symptoms, it is important to remember that while some red fruited cultivars produce distinct symptoms of leaf roll disease, a reliable diagnosis is not possible based on visual symptoms alone. Not only do symptoms vary among different cultivars, 
The expression of symptoms is also influenced by several other factors like variety, the age of the vine, severity of the disease, and environmental conditions. Compounding the issue of disease identification is that several physiological or viticultural conditions, including nutritional issues, physical damage to the vine, or herbicide injury result in discolorations that can mimic leaf roll disease symptoms. The discolorations shown in these pictures are due to phosphorus deficiency and mimic symptoms of leaf roll disease. However, nutritional deficiency as well as herbicide damage will express visual symptoms that are temporary and may not occur in the same grapevine in successive years. In contrast, symptoms due to leaf roll disease appear in an infected grapevine in successive years. Mechanical damage and girdling can lead to foliage discolorations in the form of reddening of leaves that sometimes mimic leaf roll disease symptoms. However, leaf roll disease symptoms will typically appear on different shoots throughout the vine, generally beginning at the bottom of the plant and progressing upward, while the symptoms caused by physical damage are restricted to the injured portion of the shoot with all the leaves beyond the point of injury showing discoloration. In the case of girdling, only the affected leaf or shoot shows reddening leaf tissue and petioles, whereas the rest of the vine look normal. Cold winters can cause damage to the grapevine vascular tissue, especially in young vineyards. This can lead to callus formation at the sites of injury as shown on the right, which can disrupt phloem translocation of nutrients, especially resulting in vine girdling. Such an injury results in reddening of leaves that sometimes mimic leaf roll disease symptoms. The symptoms of rugose wood complex are expressed as pits and grooves in the woody trunk of a vine. The symptoms can be seen on both the cyan and rootstock around the graft union. Symptoms of rugose wood complex are usually not expressed in self-rooted Vetus vinifera cultivars like those planted in eastern Washington, even though viruses that cause disease are present. All four disorders of rugose wood disease complex can be recognized by grafting them on specific indicator hosts. Each disorder will only appear when grafted on the appropriate host, such as St. George LN33 or Cobra 5BB. For example, Rupestris stem pitting disorder induces distinctive stem markings when grafted to the rootstock St. George. These markings consist of pitting extending downward from the graft union. Similarly, LN33 stem grooving disorder shows grooves of various lengths that develop on the rootstock LN33. Cobra stem grooving induces wood necrosis pits and grooves on the stems and yellow spots on the leaves of the rootstock Cobra 5BB. Lastly, Corky Bark Disorder shows grooving and pitting in all parts of the stem when grafted to both St. George and LN33 rootstocks. Other symptoms may include red leaves, bark splitting due to the swelling of canes, and spongy callus tissues, hence the name Corky Bark. Indicator plants are used to help determine if Vetus vinifera scions are infected with the virus and thus, when grafted onto susceptible rootstocks, would cause symptoms that would then result in the death of the plant. Again, these diseases are really only of concern in regions where grafted vines are used. Grapevine fan leaf disease usually appears in patches in the field and infected vines are smaller than normal. Typically, leaf symptoms include severe distortion, bright chlorosis or yellowing of leaves, closely spaced veins, and widely spaced leaf margins leading to the shape of a fan. Hence, the disease is called fan leaf disease. Fan leaf symptoms can be seen both in red and white fruited cultivars. Fan leaf virus can also reduce 
fruit set up to 80% and clusters contain large and small berries. At fruit maturity, clusters on affected vines are straggly with large and small berries. Such a reduction in fruit production, which varies with cultivar and season, may result in severe economic loss. It is important to note that herbicide damage and genetic factors can cause leaf deformations that look like symptoms of fan leaf disease. The top three pictures are usually seen in grapevines affected by herbicide damage and the bottom pictures show genetic deformations consisting of mosaic and yellowing of veins. Additionally, some herbicides can also cause similar symptoms to those seen in the lower right image. Due to the perennial nature of the grapevine, mixed virus infections are common. For example, one plant can have mixed infections of different grapevine leaf roll associated viruses. In addition, grapevines can have different grapevine leaf roll associated viruses and viruses associated with rugos wood complex or fan leaf virus. Some mixed infections result in synergistic interactions leading to severe disease symptoms, reduced vigor, and higher yield losses. Based on these pictures, it is evident that visual symptoms alone may not be reliable for an accurate diagnosis of viral diseases. Unfortunately, the expression of viral symptoms can vary depending on the cultivar, time of year, or particular stage of disease development. It is also important to remember that there are several other conditions like nutrient deficiency or physical damage that mimic virus disease symptoms. Therefore, accurate diagnosis of a particular virus disease is vital for disease management. When visual diagnosis is insufficient or inconclusive, we use laboratory methods. Molecular and serological assays are used for the detection of grapevine viruses in the lab. Both ELISA or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay and RT-PCR or reverse transcription PCR are used in a complementary manner for the detection of grapevine viruses. ELISA and PCR assays are more versatile can provide results within a couple of days and process a large number of samples in a relatively short period of time. RT-PCR is relatively more accurate and sensitive than ELISA. Therefore, it is possible to diagnose several viruses simultaneously at lower concentrations using PCR assays. RT-PCR is used for the detection of viruses with RNA genome, such as grapevine leaf roll associated viruses, and PCR is used for the detection of viruses with DNA genome, such as grapevine red blotch associated virus. Results from our statewide survey of Washington vineyards indicated the presence of grapevine leaf roll associated virus 1, 2, 3, and 4, and its strains 5 and 9. In addition, four viruses associated with rugose wood complex, grapevine fan leaf virus, grapevine fleck virus, grapevine Syrah virus 1, and grapevine red blotch associated virus have been documented in Washington vineyards. This table shows sampling time for the detection of viruses associated with different diseases. In general, Leaf roll associated viruses can be detected by ELISA or RT-PCR throughout the season. Fan leaf virus can be detected by both assays during the early part of the season. Since symptoms can become less distinct in summer, PCR is used for virus detection in summer and fall. Due to the lack of antibodies for all viruses associated with rugose wood complex, PCR is used for their detection throughout the season. It should be remembered that antibodies for all grapevine viruses are not available for use in ELISA. Hence, several labs routinely use PCR for the detection of currently known grapevine viruses. 
In summary, it is important to remember that mixed infections of grapevine viruses are frequent and symptoms are not a reliable indicator for the diagnosis of viruses. Symptom-based diagnosis is further complicated for the following two reasons. One is that red and white fruited cultivars and different red fruited cultivars show variation in symptoms. Secondly, discolorations induced due to abiotic factors and mechanical damage to vines mimic symptoms caused by virus diseases. Therefore, it is important to use diagnostic assays mentioned earlier for the detection of viruses and to differentiate symptoms caused by viruses from discolorations due to abiotic factors and mechanical damage to vines. The next few slides will show how grapevine viruses can affect vine health and fruit and wine quality. Negative impacts of grapevine viruses can be seen in both red and white fruited cultivars. For example, vine vigor and canopy growth are reduced in both red and white cultivars when infected with grape leaf roll disease. These pictures show healthy vines directly next to infected vines. Infected grapevines develop weak trunks over time, leading to reduced lifespan and productivity. Infected vines give lower fruit yield with poor quality grapes because they have smaller leaves with less green pigment when compared to leaves from a healthy plant. This means that infected leaves are less efficient in photosynthesis and cannot produce enough sugar for the berries. These pictures show impacts of leaf roll disease on fruit yield in two red fruited wine grape cultivars. It is obvious that virus infected vines give significantly less fruits compared to healthy vines. Reductions in yield due to virus infections are highly variable from season to season. Yield reductions as high as 50% are commonly reported in different cultivars depending on the severity of infection. As an example, this graph shows the impact of grapevine leaf roll disease in Merlot in a commercial vineyard near Prosser, Washington. Depending on the severity of the disease each season, yield loss between 10 to 30 percent has been observed in this block. On average, decrease in yields between 20 to 25 percent is quite common and the losses can be much higher if the disease is severe. In practical terms, even a small decrease in annual yields due to leaf roll disease has a cumulative effect causing decreased economic returns over a period of time, thereby affecting the long-term profitability of the vineyard. This picture shows impact of grapevine leaf roll disease on berry clusters and fruit ripening in both red and white fruited cultivars. In all cases, grape clusters from virus infected grapevines are smaller and less compact. The berries of infected clusters are of different size, maturity, and have reduced sugar. In the case of red grape cultivars as shown here, berries show uneven color development due to reduced accumulation of anthocyanin pigments, whereas white grape cultivars do not express dramatic discoloration due to the absence of pigments. This table shows impacts of grapevine leaf roll disease on sugar content of grapes as measured by bricks during four seasons. It is evident that grapes from virus infected Merlot vines have significantly less amounts of sugars compared to berries from healthy vines. Sugars can be reduced between 4 to 8 percent due to leaf roll infection. Since the berry quality is affected by virus diseases, the wine quality is also impacted. As shown here, wine from grapes with leaf roll disease have less color than wines from grapes of healthy vines. In addition, Wines from leaf roll affected vines appear to be more acidic, less fruity with significantly less 
anthocyanin pigments and alcohol content, thereby affecting overall quality of the wine. In summary, virus diseases are bad for grapevines because they affect growth, vigor, and overall performance of grapevines leading to lower fruit yield and poor quality grapes and wines. Viruses infecting grapevines are not spread from infected plant to healthy plant by physical contact. Many of these viruses are not spread through seed. Since grapevines are vegetatively propagated, viruses can be spread long distances by the distribution of infected cuttings. Viruses can also be spread by grafting cyan material or budwood as shown here from an infected plant onto a virus free woodstock. Conversely, virus can also spread through the rootstock to the cyan even though the cyan material is virus free. Thus, it is very important to have both cyan and rootstock free from virus. In case a grower wants to cut down old vines and top graft with a virus tested cyan variety, it is important to ensure that the old vine is free from virus. Otherwise, the virus present in the old vine will spread via graft union to the grafted cyan. All viruses shown here can spread via vegetative cuttings, but most of them can also be spread through vectors. For example, viruses associated with grapevine leaf roll disease can be spread by insect vectors like mealybugs and scale insects. In the rugose wood complex, only certain viruses within that complex can be spread by vectors, but most cannot, so it is dominantly viewed as a propagation vectored disease. In contrast, diseases like fan leaf are spread by soil inhabiting nematodes. At this point, we do not know if the red blotch associated virus is spread by a vector. In the case of vectors, it is important to know if both the virus and vector are located in the same area. In some cases, the vector may be in the area, but the virus is not or vice versa. In these situations, quarantines help reduce the likelihood of disease establishment and spread. Several species of mealybugs are being implicated in the spread of viruses associated with leaf roll disease. In California, for example, seven different mealybug species have been reported as potential vectors of different leaf roll associated viruses. In addition to the six shown here, gills mealybug or Faricia gilli have recently been identified as a potential vector. More are likely to be added as our ability to test for vectoring improves. These mealybug species are known to spread all grapevine leaf roll associated viruses except leaf roll associated virus 2 and 7. Among these seven different mealybug species, only the grape mealybug has so far been found in Washington State vineyards. In this respect, the Washington State vineyards are fortunate when compared to California vineyards. A concerted effort is critical to avoid the introduction of mealybug species alien to Washington vineyards. Soft scale insects such as the European fruit laconium scale, are present in Washington vineyards and a competent vector of the virus. The two vectors look different from each other and a trained consultant can easily distinguish between mealybugs and scale. It is clear from the previous slides that virus diseases affect vine health, fruit yield, and fruit and wine quality. Therefore, management of virus diseases is important to mitigate these negative impacts. Unfortunately, there are no chemicals to control virus diseases or cure infected plants. Therefore, we have to use indirect methods to prevent virus infections. Two widely adopted methods for this approach are number one, planting new blocks with certified virus tested cuttings from certified nurseries and or from the clean plant centers, such as the Clean Plant Center Northwest, located in Prosser, Washington, or the Foundation Plant Services, located in Davis, California, 
and two, controlling vectors to minimize spread between and within vineyards. Although planting certified vines will provide a sense of comfort, it is important to be vigilant against new virus infections from external sources. Therefore, it is advisable to monitor new plantings on a regular basis during the season and identify any suspicious vines showing symptoms as shown here and analyze the root cause of these discolorations to take further action. Make a preliminary determination in the field in terms of whether discoloration is due to mechanical damage, nutrient deficiency, or virus infections. Only when the first two possibilities are ruled out is it logical to test samples for the presence of virus. When it is finally determined, based on lab diagnostic tests, that symptoms are due to virus infection, it is advisable to remove the infected vine, including as much of the root tissue as possible. In order to avoid the risk of residual infections, it's a best practice to simultaneously remove at least one vine on either side of the symptomatic vine. Carry all plant materials stem, leaves, roots, far away from the vineyard and burn them to ensure complete removal of the virus source within the block. The next step will be to replant with virus-tested cuttings. As shown here, a grower has removed infected vines and replanted with cuttings of the same variety or clone obtained from a certified nursery. In a few years, they will grow and produce grapes along with other vines in the block. It is critical to remember that grapevine virus diseases can be effectively managed by prevention because grapevines are propagated through vegetative cuttings and infected propagated material is largely responsible for the spread of virus diseases. You can prevent the spread of viruses by following certain best management practices. The first line of defense is using certified grapevines for new plantings obtained from reliable sources like certified nurseries. Certified cuttings have gone through a series of tests to ensure they are infected by specific viruses. Not all nurseries are certified nurseries and not all certified nurseries exclusively sell certified vines. You need to specify certified when ordering. Never assume that grapevines without visual symptoms are healthy. Never produce planting materials from an unreliable source or take cuttings from an existing vineyard without knowing the sanitary status of that particular vineyard. Planting cuttings that have been or may have been compromised is a risky proposition and the quality of planting materials should not be compromised. Remove infected vines and control vectors to prevent the spread of viruses. Lastly, seek advice if you are not sure about the symptoms of your vines. More details about grapevine leaf roll disease can be found in this bulletin. Download free copies of English and Spanish versions from the website listed here. The website also provides additional information on other virus diseases. If you need further advice, please contact Research and Extension Faculty at Washington State University, or if you prefer, contact Dr. Naidu Rayapati directly by telephone or email listed here. You can also visit the website shown for additional information on various virus diseases of wine grapes. In conclusion, the intention and purpose of this presentation is to bring awareness about different virus disease problems of wine grapes and to empower you with science-based knowledge that can be used for your advantage and prosperity. Together, we can make a difference to promote sustainability of the wine grape industry in Washington State. Thank you.